السلام علیکم سعیدی Can we make dua for those that have passed even if they have live a non-religious life? Yeah, why could you not make dua for anyone? <clears throat> Means everything is is with a, a common sense. And our, our way is a very easy way if the foundation of what we do is based on love. <clears throat> When you love somebody, then Your natural inclination and your God-given right is to pray for them and that's a sign of your love and you should include them. That's why we pray for our shaykhs because we love them. Those who don't love them, they don't pray for them and they're cheap, worst cheapness. And that's what Prophet taught his companions, he said, do you know which one of you is cheap? And then the look of the one who's not spending, said, no, the one who hears my name and doesn't give salawat upon it. Why? Because he was teaching that, if you love me, the easiest thing you can do… Now for the shaykhs and those whom we love, pray for them. Put their name in your prayers, it doesn't cost you anything. Why are you holding that back? What do you lose from that? So the way of love answers everything. Of course you should be praying for everyone you love and we are not people to judge who achieved, didn't achieve, who, who had religious life, didn't have a religious life. Because why Allah gave somebody to be religious and somebody not to be religious? Also that the one who's religious would pray for him or her. So that is the responsibility of tariqahs and, and the people of perfection and the schools of perfection. Even Salatul Maghrib we have Janazat Qaibeen, why, why Naqshbandiya is upholding that? Salatul Janazat Qaibeen we four takbirat that we recited janazah for the one whom is not visible, why? Because within 24 hours there are thousands if not millions of people that are lying dead somewhere, that nobody prayed for them, nobody came to them, nobody recited over them. They died in a ditch, they died in a hole, they died in a, in a catastrophe. And Naqshbandiya are, are a class in which they are the caretakers of this nation, the nation that has accepted Islam and the nation, because all creation is Prophet they're all from his soul. And the nation that did not yet accept Islam and that's why in Islamic life it's mandatory to do da'wah. It's not a choice but Allah is looking for us to be doing da'wah. If you do da'wah with yourself, your character, your words, your knowledge, your money, your rizq, your time, there's nobody who cannot do da'wah. And we said it's even easier than ever now, you can take the article of a shaykh and share it and you did da'wah. If one person comes to that and if that person receives these all hadiths that if somebody comes to Islam all their sins will be washed away and if Allah gave you all the treasures of earth it's nothing compared to accepting Islam. Imagine then the one who brought that person got, who got all those treasures, what kind of finder fee Allah is giving to them? <laughs> you brought that one? Oh, I gave all those jewels, imagine what station I'm giving to you of light and blessings and dressings. So our whole life is, is, is to do that, especially if we love Sayyidina Muhammad of course we want everybody to come to that love and that ish. It's our… it's a duty upon our reality and we do it with everything that we have, with our time, our efforts, our knowledge, our abilities, our food, drink. Our guys are going out and, and giving food. There's more food coming to the archdiocese from Muslims and they don't… they can't imagine it. How these bearded Muhammadiyoon and, and they look like the guys from the three wise men <laughs> on, on Christmas time. Beards and, and turbans coming and bringing food to them.
to donate from our sources that food and what they're gathering around the U.S. So alhamdulillah, this is amazing da'wah. It's not only making Allah happy that we're giving food but the immensity of the da'wah that these are Muhammadiyun. And when that man dies or whoever's receiving those food, the angels will ask them, have you ever seen a Muhammadiyun? And these are questions that will be coming to their soul and the soul will testify, not the nafs and the ego, the soul will say, definitely we had an interaction with this and this, this and those souls will be interceding for those people in difficulty. So it's the immensity, that's why Mawlana Shaykh would say, just take my picture and, and spread it everywhere because they will testify, their soul will testify. That's why when you walk the people are staring at you, not because you're strange but because their soul is saying, look at that Muhammadan light, you're going to testify that you saw his life in the grave or, sh or her light. It's Allah's rahmah and mercy that nobody is going to now in this world now say that they never met a Muhammadiyun. So this light of Prophet is, is moving and everywhere. So this is the immensity and the responsibility and the blessings that we have. So definitely we are people who pray for everyone, Rabbil Mu'mineen wa Rabbil Kafireen, Rabbil Alameen. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what is meant by Naqshbandiya inherit from Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Abu Bakr? Oh, that's like a two-week two, two series. <laughs> Naqshbandiyat al aliyah that go into our Muharram. You can Google the Muharram talks and that's when the, the first month is the first Khalifa. And the reality of the first of the Imams, every month is under 12 Imams and every month under 12 Khalifas. The first Khalifa Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and the first Imam is Imam Ali And they represent the two moons, the two sides of the moon. The face of the moon Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Qamarun and the reality of the physical guidance and the first of those to represent the Muhammadan guidance upon this earth. And Imam Ali represents then the spiritual inheritance of that guidance and the inheritance for Ahlul Bayt and the family and prophetic secret. And they bring that secret together in Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. So that has an immense, immense reality for Naqshbandiyya that they carry the secret of Imam Ali Salam's prophetic inheritance not as a Sahabi because 42 tariqahs are with Imam Ali Salam. And those are like the secrets of a Sahabi. Because he's also a companion of Prophet But under Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah we carry the secret of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq as salam and then Imam Ali salam plants his family inheritance in Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah with Sayyidina Qasim, Sayyidina Salaman al-Farsi and Sayyidina Imam Jafar al-Sadiq And Imam Jafar al-Sadiq brought the two rivers into the tariqah by order of Imam Ali salam. So the tariqah holds the two rivers of realities and that's why Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, the Most High and alhamdulillah the soul of all other tariqahs inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, if we wear a blue evil eye bracelet and people can't see it, will it still catch the negative energies? Better to see it, that's why you, you, you have it or you, you put a firuz ring. If you feel there's a lot of negativity you put a firuz or you can have a necklace that has the, the blue firuz. So yeah, it's, it's something that you, you want people to see. So on the bracelets then they, they see amongst each other if, if uh, females are wearing their bracelet then the other females will see it and, and acknowledge it. But those are things that, that have to catch the eye. So it's different than the ta'weez. So the, the bracelet itself has no power. So that's when they say, oh well, that's when these ulama, external ulama are very disturbed by that. So yeah, the, the blue has no power, it's not a ta'weez. So the ruqiyah, the ta'weez is something different. 
Those are writings of, of Qur'an and Ismullah, Isma Rasul and Awliyaullah. Those are given by Prophet and they come from the heavens with a Divine light and there are angels attached to each letter. And those powers that are emanating from the ta'weez into the car, the home or onto the person and they don't need anyone to see it and those whom need to see it, they see it and they choose to go somewhere else. Those bring out a light from, from paradise, from heavens. These are for spiritual battles. So these are the armory and armaments that come from the heavens so that the believers are not alone. Now the color blue is from a haqqaiq reality that Allah is teaching us, your eyes are like weapons. So you know in battle they have a shield. So if you're standing in front of an archer best you have a very nice shield because he's just going to be firing arrows into your head, into your body. So they have actually very big shields and they, they keep standing there. So Allah is teaching, yeah the, the more dangerous than that archery is that guy's eyes over there. Mm. When they look at you they have hasa, they have an energy they don't know how to control but what about the one who knows how to control and they send a very bad energy? That then becomes the reality of the blue. The blue is like a shield that you're catching something. So it by itself is not something holy but this has to do in, in the battling of light and energy. The blue has an ability to deflect. So you keep putting the blue because as soon as you put the blue the person's eye went to that blue and that was the objective was to deflect the eye of that person onto that object and many times it will crack. So these are different, the ruqiyya and the things that bring light and energies they don't have to be visible. The ta'weez can be in the corner of the window and it's scaring the ones outside because they see those, those things, those nefarious creatures when they come across these Naqshbandi houses they see lights emanating from all directions. They don't want to go close enough to inspect the light because by virtue of coming near to it, it draws them in to burn them. So from a distance like a criminal they say there's an alarm company there, why we want to go there? This guy's house has no lights coming from it, we'll go there. So this is the, the, the reality and the blessing that Allah gives to the nation inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can I stay gentle around harsh, loving people? It always makes me tense and tires my heart. <clears throat> yeah, we try our best. Keep your wudu, keep your salawats, and try your best to, to, you know, do your practices, do your salawats in that area. Something that Allah melt them to become softer and then you, you spend whatever time that you can and, and you know get your break and your distance and, and try to tolerate so that you don't overwhelm yourself in a negativity. And whatever Allah's condition, ufawud amri in Allah, in Allah basirun bi libad. Anything that Allah puts us in, Allah knows the condition that we're in. You have to acknowledge that Allah knows my condition. Fawd amri in Allah in Allahu basirun bi libad. Ya Rabbi, please, you see my condition, it's overwhelming me. <clears throat> that becomes then your najad and salat and najad and asking Allah, grant me a relief, I'm being oppressed. The dua of an oppressor is accepted. So there must be a hikmah that you're under difficulty, Allah accepting your dua. Now start making du'as. So it's not so much about always trying to con change your condition but that to acknowledge this condition is happening, maybe Allah wants me to pray for people because the prayer of an oppressed person is accepted. So many pious people are oppressed. So if you read the history of the shaykhs we're, we're now celebrating Imam Jafar as Sadiq who was martyred and if he would immensity of his station and how much he was tortured by Al-Mansur and the Khalifas who were running the Islamic government, 
how much they were torturing them, how much they were hiding, how much they were trying to avoid being sort of uh, in the eye of these people, but yet they still killed them. So if, if these pious people are going to be killed by Muslims, then me and you we can expect a little bit of difficulty and not to worry about it. They didn't have lives of comfort, they had lives of immense difficulty. So they give for us a precedent and an understanding, don't complain, be, be content with your life, nobody has killed you yet, so your head, be com content in your life, be patient in your life, have the best of characters and love them whom they suffered and they know what difficulty is. And that's why they are mushkil bushar. Is if you put this whole system again together and you, you understand this system of tariqah, you'll understand how they're teaching. So, Banul was selling people houses of paradise made out of sticks, and that's no value. But as soon as you gave him something, there has to be an exchange Allah describes. It's not you say, I believe in you and I'm going to go to paradise. Allah says, no, no, get an exchange from them. Even you, they'll buy that nothing house for your claim of paradise. So it means this is the oceans of faith, how much faith these people had that they would see these awliya because they're mushkil gusha, they take away difficulty because they were tormented in their life. As a result of people participating with them, being with them, interacting with them, they are not normal people. Many difficulties will be taken away by your participation. If he could give you a home for a dirham in paradise, what 400 years ago? What do you think people are capable now in the last days and dajjal is upon this earth? What type of bargain do you think if you make with these awliya, what Allah would dress you from? What Allah will bless you from? It's something that you can't even imagine. If a house in paradise was one dirham, imagine what's being given now for those who come and heed the call and participate and, 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 and activate their heart and their reality and their faith. And by love of these holy souls and, and listening to their life, it gives us a shame that don't complain, they suffered greatly in this way of Allah What you have to do is meditate, contemplate and then ask Allah Ufa Abdu Amri Ya Rabbi for verily you see my condition, give me strength. The madad of these awliyaullah, they'll come and give strength, they'll give a light and a blessing unto the soul inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, salaam ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.